Today, we'll be unboxing and assembling the Voxalab Akia 3D printer. I aim for this to be beginner friendly, so I took a lot of time while recording this. It's broken down into multiple videos. Hopefully, it keeps your attention. Hopefully, you watch them all. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments, and we'll see you at the end of the video. Hi folks, it's Leo from Prince Leo 3D. Today I'll be bringing the unboxing and the assembly of the Voxelab Akia 3D printer. Uh, this is a very low cost, entry level friendly printer. I haven't seen too many videos on the internet of the assembly, there are a few out there, but because of the nature of the price point, I mean I got this thing for I believe $185 US, tax and everything, this can be a printer that brings people into the 3D printing community. So I wanted to show, based on this printer, what it looks like to assemble it if you have never put together a 3D printer before. Uh, now this is a clone of the Creality Ender 3 V2. So besides this video and a few other videos that are IKEA specific, you can find um, Creality Ender 3 V2 assembly videos. And you can watch those. I recommend watching as many as you can, especially if this is your first time putting a printer together. So there are a few differences between the Creality design and the Voxelab design. I go through them in the assembly, but very quickly, one's right here, this cover, Voxelab, has it off from the factory, actually makes it really easy um, to assemble because it's off. The second is the screws back here, which is really big game. I can adjust this x-axis gantry right now as I sit. The way the screws on Creality, they're behind this extrusion. If I wanted to adjust this, this whole assembly would come off, I would have to get behind it, adjust it, and then put everything back on. Voxelab has moved the screws out. I can adjust it right from here. That's awesome. It even changed the fulcrum. So now the pivot points are here instead of very close together. I would imagine over the long term, that's a good thing. Uh, so that again is covered in the assembly video. Now I've assembled about four of these Ender 3s or the Ender 3s, this is obviously the clone. Uh, a CR10, V2, S Pro, there's so many acronyms I'm not even sure, and Ender 5. So by no means am I a 3D printing expert or pro, but I've put together a decent amount of these machines. I've run into some the pitfalls and I know some of the solutions to them. So the reason I'm putting this out there is for that. It's going to be beginner friendly and I hope someone can glean a little bit of knowledge from this and it'll help somebody out. contents of the box that Voxelab sends out with the IKEA 3D printer. A few things to note. Number one, the filament that comes with these printers and most printers isn't the best. It's not the highest quality. So definitely go out and buy or order some other, uh, some other filament. Amazon has a bunch of access to a bunch of great brands, Hatchbox, Overture, eSun, things like that. If you have access to a micro center nearby, Inland is their uh, house brand. It's very high quality PLA and PLA+. Plus. Secondly, the Z-Rod or the uh, T-Type screw that comes with this printer was ungreased from the factory when I got it. And that is something that really sh needs to be greased. It is getting friction on it every print. It's the gigantic screw that turns and brings your X gantry up and down every single print. So that needs to be greased. What I did was I went to Home Depot near me and I bought a, a dry spray lubricant. 
which helps to uh, not only grease up this particular item, but also it doesn't, because the dry nature of it, it doesn't attract any sort of dust or any particulates in the air, as opposed to like a lithium grease or something like that. So I had, I've had really good success with this so far, and I greased mine up before I assembled. Thirdly, the bed clips on the printer were, uh, for me at least, the first, there's two bed clips on the printer base. One was already off, and then as I was taking the printer out, the other one was barely hanging on for dear life. Uh, Sylvester Stallone style cliffhanger. And if I hadn't seen it, thankfully, the glass bed could have slipped off, cracked, something like that. So when you're taking the printer base out, just be mindful. Either make sure the clips are really on tight, both of them, or take them both off and take the glass build plate off separately. Lastly, and somewhat of a glaring oversight, is the absence of flush cutters. Most printers nowadays come with uh, flush cutters, not really a make or break item, but it's something that once you have it in your uh, arsenal of 3D printing items, you kind of find many uses for it, most notably when you are going to introduce filament to the machine. You cut the filament at, at an angle, 45 degrees generally, or what have you, and it helps feed the filament through. Go to Amazon. I believe the dollar store might even sell comparable uh, units, something like that, that can uh, clip filament, which is his main uh, purpose, obviously, cutting the filament. And finally, before we get into the actual assembly of this printer, I'm going to be doing a few upgrades to this printer during assembly. I'm going to front load those videos right to the beginning. So if you want to skip them, you can. If you want to watch them, though, they're going to be coming up right next. I'm going to be upgrading the bed springs and upgrading the Bowden tube. Those are very simple, very basic upgrades that I highly recommend. They're going to improve, improve the quality of your prints and improve the quality of your life because hopefully you won't have to be leveling the bed nearly as much once you upgrade those springs. These don't have to be done right now during assembly. They can be done during any time over the lifetime of your printer. So if for some reason you, you don't have these on hand, you assemble a printer and three months down the road, three weeks down the road, you want to eventually upgrade, come on back to this video. You can watch this portion and then you can apply it to your printer as is. Okay, in this section, we're going to be replacing the standard springs to an upgraded spring set. It's pretty simple to get this off. Um, what I'm doing right here is just removing all the... Um, Adjustment knobs very quickly obviously to get to the springs underneath the big key here is you want to remove them a little by little You don't want to remove one all at once and uh, Possibly warp that build plate. So here are the original springs coming off um, Those are the gray ones the metal colored ones and the yellow coated ones are the ones that I'm upgrading to and you can tell They definitely wound tighter smaller gaps and they're certainly tighter when you go to press on them so all they, uh, all they do is sit right on that screw right there, and then they get compressed by the adjustment knob. So the one I'm doing right in there first is the uh, strain relief cable. That one's kind of hard to get in. Once you get in, it's simple to slip it right back down. The springs just go uh, over the screw, and then the adjustment, adjustment knob screws on to the screw end, and you tighten these springs down. It's a very, very simple upgrade. Uh, again, just like they came off, they're going to go on. You want to screw them all on little by little, and you want to screw them on to about 75% uh, strength. So when you, it is time to level this build plate, you have a little bit of tweaking room up and down. And that's it for the upgrading of the springs. Here we have the hot end. This is uh, where we're going to start when we replace the PTFE Bowden tubing. If uh, if you've already assembled your printer, it's not gonna look like this. It's gonna be on the X-axis gantry, but this is what it looks like before we've assembled it. So it is a fan shroud, two fans in there, the hot end is in there, and then you have a little bracket with three wheels on the, on the back right here is what we're looking at. So the two top wheels are just regular roller wheels. That bottom wheel, uh, the single wheel by itself, is the eccentric nut wheel. So if you do wanna adjust this once it's on the gantry, that's the one you're gonna wanna use. Um, in the back, there's two screws one holds the cooling fan on which cools your part or the part cooling fan which holds the um fan that cools the parts which is close to the nozzle and then there's a fan in front that cools down your hot end to try and regulate the temperature so i take both these screws out i'm not even sure that it's necessary to be honest i believe you only need to take the screw out that's between the two wheels at this point though i took out both screws and then in order to get this thing off all you gotta do is sort of rock it it's plastic so don't be too rough with it but there's a little uh, plastic post, and then there's a small plastic arm, both right in the center, about, um, I don't know, 12 millimeters away, maybe 20 millimeters away from each other. And you just rock it left and forth a little bit, and you'll get it open. Uh, now we're open right here. You can see that's the hot end right, uh, right in the middle there. Right there's the PTFE tubing. It goes into a small coupler, which is holding onto it. That red portion's the heat sink. Right there is the silicone sock that I just took off um, that tries to keep the heat inside. That silicone sock was over right where I'm pointing to was the uh, heating block, and b below the heating block is the nozzle. Uh, so that's the basic parts of it. Uh, the nozzle uh, 
So right here is the PTF tubing, obviously. And right where I'm pointing to is the the nut that is holding the tubing in. It's got springs inside. So right there, you see, I cannot pull it or I cannot push it. There's a small plastic tab on top. And when that ta tab is extended, you can't uh, pull or push it, which is what you want. What I'm using is one of the wrenches to depress the nut. And now I can release the PTFE tubing because the teeth have retracted. Flash forward to me matching up my new PTFE uh, tubing. It's Capricorn tubing. It's the blue one. Check the length, snip it, make sure it's uh, cut very flush. And then all we have to do is install it. Installation, pretty simple, but important. You want to make sure that when you seat this PTFE tubing, it's seated all the way down. And the way these hot ends work is the gap for the PTFE tubing goes from the top of that nut almost all the way to the bottom of that red heat sink. Uh, there's a small metal sheath inside that it fits in. So you have to make sure when you push this in, it goes all the way down which is what I'm talking about right here. Now, the one problem I saw with my hot end was the nut on top that uh, opens and grabs uh, the PTFE tubing. It was on there with uh, so much force, I couldn't take it off. I couldn't loosen it, which I thought was a problem. One of uh, one of the great su suggestions by uh, Tomb of 3D Printed Horrors, Tim Tullis, I believe is his name. I hope I didn't butcher that. Um is when he puts these PTFE tubings in, he makes sure that no, that none on top is tight, then he backs it off a complete turn. He puts the PTF tubing all the way down, makes sure it's snug, and then he tightens that nut up back to the one full turn so it's snug again. And that just helps pull that PTFE tubing the entire length. So even when you're all the way bottomed out, using the nut to tighten around it and pull it down a little more, it's so smart. So that's what I tried to do here, but like I said, I couldn't loosen that nut. Uh, I used the spanners, the wrench that they uh, that they provided, and it was bending around uh, the nut so much. So, so once we have that PTFE flush and uh, as far down to that hot end as we can get it, we're going to start reassembling our hot end. Start with putting the silicone sock on. Then we're going to make sure that we place that blue plastic spacer on the top of the uh, hot end nut in order to make it make sure that it's biting down on our PTFE tubing. Then we can close up. The fan shroud, there's like I spoke about earlier, there's only two small plastic portions that stick up in the back. Make sure those are lined up and then snap them into place. It's a pretty good snap. You don't want to muscle it though, so if it's not going together properly, definitely make sure you have it lined up. After that, we're going to replace the two screws that came out. Also, like I mentioned earlier, I don't know that I needed to take out both those screws, but I did. So they'll both go back in. And once those screws are installed, hot end is back to being intact and we can start with the assembly of the printer.